that's fine. All right, so the debate today is Asuma Sarutobi versus Mirai Sarutobi. We are debating in the tournament for the title of uh, Hokage right now. Um, here with me is Tessero. He will be my opponent. And uh, so let's go. Tessero, do you want me to give my opening statement or do you want to give your opening statement first? Yeah, you can start. All right. So Mirai scales to like, she scales to a few people, very few people in her own verse, actually. She scales to, or above Boruto and Sarada. Or not as a team, but uh, in general, she scales above them. She's So that kind of puts her like scaling to Hokage Kakashi. I'll explain this to why later. Um, and she also scales to Ryuki, who is like Hidon, Hidon Imposter. Yeah, you can just call him that. And I think that and her Genjutsu prowess will just get her the win over her dad. Alright, so... Um, I think Asuma scales to Kakashi. Right? Um, from part one, at the very least. And I uh, feel as though his um, mastery of his uh, chakra blades would outdo the um, type of fighting style that Mirai has, which is just like a, a watered-down version of what he has. Her Genjutsu is also pretty trash. Like, I've only seen it uh, work on some like fodder commoner. Uh, she, she also has like no confidence in herself. Very. I guess that doesn't matter. Wait, never, never mind. Yeah, that's it. All right. So let's start with Genjutsu, right? Because I'm gonna make a claim, right? And it's that she just uses Genjutsu off rip and like confuses the fuck out of her dad. I can provide scans for her doing that. Can you provide scans that her Genjutsu is like gonna work on someone of that caliber? Well, I mean, Ryuk, just finding and taking down Ryuk was stated to be a mission beyond S class. That doesn't mean anything. All right, it doesn't so mean scales mean, to people. Like... So, do we need to get into my Ryuk scaling first? Sure. All right. So, you know the idea of proof by exhaustion, right? No. Okay. So, it's this mathematical concept that whenever something consistently comes out to this, like over and over again, that this is to be true if nothing contradicts it, right? So, okay. I'm, I'm just going to post, like, all of these scans of Ryuk from the <coughs> anime talking about um i assume you're fine with like anime feats for her yeah it's fine <laughs> yeah here's all of the times that he like continuously just says i'm on par with hedon i would stand shoulder to shoulder with hedon i'm the second coming of hedon i'm the one who should inherit hedon does he even know hedon does he know hedon we don't know that. Yeah. Does he have, like, any knowledge on Hidon at all to compare himself to Hidon? Yeah, it's stated that he read the scripture of Joshin. That doesn't mean he has, like, feats of Hidon. Like, that, that is, him saying that he compares to Hidon, like, years after Hidon's already dead, means literally nothing. It's, like, 13 years after Hidon's death. It's not that far yeah, of a so, time skip. Wait, there are multiple from, people wait, wait, hold on. So from the time Shikamaru killed him and the oh, time I'm that... Oh, sorry. Uh, That's like 15, 16 years. Sorry. Yeah, so how old is this guy? Um, he looks to be of comparable age. No, nah, I, I need, like, need like an actual age. We Do have we have no a confirmed age? Of his age? So no. we don't know what how old he is at all, right? No. And? All right, so him saying that he compares to Hedon, like I said, since he has no knowledge and we have no reason for him to be a credible source, knowing he's a, a, a conniving, scheming bastard, to believe anything he says. Okay, and like right, I, what yeah. I said was, what do you mean, and? there's the mathematical proof of proof by exhaustion, and right, he not only has read the text of Joshin, but it's like confirmed by Mike Guy and Kakashi that like he looked up to Hedon. So and if read I were to like. Texts read the the bible go to church for like 15 years of my life and say i'm like i'm comparable to one of like saints or like jesus christ himself does that yeah. mean anything so if there's nothing to contradict it by proof by exhaustion yes you would be con comparable okay explain proof by exhaustion again so yeah go ahead and explain it for more time let me look it up so that i'm not just like yeah let me look it up too because from what i'm getting is if he says it over and over again then it's true is that what I'm understanding, what you're saying? All right. 
So let me like read off the definition. Proof by exhaustion, also known as blank, blank, and blank, that doesn't matter, is a method of mathematical proof in which the statement to be proved is split into a finite number of cases or like specific scenes. And each type of case is checked to see if the proposition in question holds, right? This is a method of direct proof. Proof by exhaustion contains two stages. A proof that the set of cases is exhaustive, like each it continues to happen. And a proof of each of these cases. So I have been able to directly state that he continually makes it very clear that he's on par, stands shoulder to shoulder, it is the second coming of Master Hedon, as he calls him. And there is nothing Again. to contradict this idea, so there's no reason to disbelieve. So, like, um, then you would have to scale Mirai to, like, Hedon. Is there any way for you to do that? I, I, what I'm saying is, this is a way of... If so, are... this seems a little bit fallacious, right? Because you're fallacious? saying... I'm, I'm going to explain. Because you're saying that just because this man has said it over and over and over again, and there's nothing to contradict it, there's also nothing to support it. It's just like okay. empty argument. So then, like, so then my piece of supporting evidence would be, right, that Mirai is one of the Hokage's bodyguards, which is like a pretty high-ranking position, actually. And this was stated to be a beyond Does that mean mission. she's like stronger than everyone else, or what does that mean exactly? I never said Hokage? that. I'm, that's why I asked the question. Well, it would obviously be some kind of indication of strength or skill, would it not? So why would they put a Chunin over, like, um, like other notable Jonin? Um, as I recall, in that position? as I recall, the things about Jonin was more so leadership capabilities. No, that's definitely a Chunin. Chunins are 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 made Chunin for their leadership, one hundred percent. <clears throat> okay, so then what is the classifications to become a Joni? I don't know, you get recommended by other Joni to yeah, be Joni. Okay. And Mirai's like 17. Or okay, no, she's and... like she's like 15. <laughs> yeah, so she's not even notable. Boruto is like stated by Kakashi to be the Chunin level Chunin like level. 10 years old. <laughs> yeah, and you know who fights Boruto and does never mind. Not don't let me get into that yet, right? So what I'm saying is Due to the fact that she has a notable position as a tuning, right? And the fact that this is stated to be a beyond S-Class mission. That the proof by exhaustion would hold, seeing as we have supporting evidence. So, Naruto and... Nothing, and um, nothing that contradicts. Okay. It's stated that... Okay, show me this, um, the scan where it says it's stated to be um, an S-Class mission. Oh. oh okay, let me try and find that. It was like... Because I'm pretty sure the Land of Waves mission was S class, and that was Naruto and Sasuke and Sakura's first mission. It was doesn't A mean class. anything. It was it was A class. Are yeah. you sure? Kakashi even remarks afterwards, just because you went on an A class mission doesn't mean you're like hot shit. All right, so the same thing with like just because you went on an S class S ranked mission doesn't mean anything, right? No. So he's telling Naruto not to get a big head. That's different. So, but okay, I would, the, be, the I, episode, I would be Kakashi in this so, situation so telling you that I, it doesn't mean anything. But to answer it, before uh -huh. I even go into the anime episode, episode 106, which is the start of the Mirai arc, is named the S rank mission. All right, so it's an S rank. Yeah, okay. So, so S rank missions. It didn't even start off like that. Like, it, it just randomly became an S rank mission. No, like, she out of was nowhere. told that it was an S rank mission. She was even bragging to Boruto about going on an oh, S-rank mission. Oh, okay, so... Oh, okay. I, 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 I misspoke. So she was told it's an S-rank mission, but Kakashi and Guy really just wanted to relax. And she oh, was just there so, to just, like, for, like, character development from um, Kakashi. Kakashi was trying to properly develop her character through this, like, mission to make her stop being so stressed, stressed so out. Do so. you not remember, like, what the end of the mission, what Kakashi was saying? He was like, yeah, it was it was an S rank mission, but because you always are so paranoid, we weren't going to tell you it was an S rank mission. So that way you would just help sell the story that we're just on vacation. That was his oh, whole yeah, reasoning yeah, he did for say not that. telling her. So okay. she was nominated to to go with Kakashi and Guy on an S rank mission, right? Kakashi yeah. finds the source of the problem and then allows Mirai to handle it all on her all on her own. 
All right, so you're saying he, she's elected when there's, again, there's more people qualified, even like Ginning that are more qualified than Mirai through feats? Mm hmm Ginning that are more qualified through feats are stronger than Mirai, from what, at least from the feats we've seen. So there's no, it's not like she was elected by strain. More, more so elected by like, how do I say, like, personal responsibility in terms of being Asuma's friend when they were little. And thus grooming her daughter, their, her, his okay. daughter. And still, Kakashi felt that she was able to take on Ryuki all by herself. He knows it's an S rank mission. He knows himself right. and Guy are sitting right uh -huh. there. And yet yeah. he still says, let's send Mirai at her. Can we, like, go on the classifications on what an S rank mission in entails? Like, what exactly does it mean? Okay. And then after that, we're going to go back to the Ryuki scaling because, like I said, that you're using this um, law of exhaustion or proof by exhaustion, but you're providing um, this scaling with uh, an, a, a fucking person who's not credible saying that he's strong and you need to provide other proof. Okay, so in, in terms of Shinobi, right, S rank means people who are in the bingo book. Yeah. And in terms of missions... Does that is... still mean S-rank nowadays in the Boruto era? If anything, it would be even stronger. Why? Seeing as, right, the the skill gap, or the skill cap for each rank has, like, raised, right? So even though Boruto... What do you mean by that? Hmm? Can you prove... Look at, like, look at what do you all mean these by... Genin who are, like, in the Chunin exams, right? We have Shinki, Mitsuki, Boruto... All of these people go on to do amazing feats and are still Genin. Wait, so Shinki, right? Shinki, Shinki doesn't have amazing feats after the yeah. tuning exams. I'm sorry. Okay. But so he like had exceptional strength. Boruto is definitely an exception. And as, as is Mitsuki, because Mitsuki was literally designed to have a, an ability that is like one of the most powerful in the verse. And okay, Boruto... But shino actually fights mitsuki right in yeah. fact it was really weird because like he mitsuki seems to like boot up into sage mode i can get you the clip for that i know i know that clip yeah and so why wouldn't mistake. shino have like a great grasp on his ability and be able to relay that otherwise like there's no reason because... for mitsuki to be an be exception no, what are you talking about relay what information to who the the information of mitsuki's great latent potential to who spencer the higher ups in the village naruto shikamaru why would he do that because they're who selects tuning no oh yeah that's that they see the potential through the tuning exam he he doesn't like personally go and like have uh like not he doesn't like nominate people for tuning so like that's not how that works no actually any um any Jonin can put in a nomination, right? For or a tuning? No, Kage can put in nomination. But for what? Seen, hmm? For tuning. For tuning? Is there like an example of that? Uh, Gara was the reason that um. Hmm. I forgot. Mm. Maybe it's the Daimyo actually who put in nominations for tuning. Who does I don't put know in about the that nomination for tuning? There's no nomination for tuning. Like, uh, you sign up for the tuning exam. It's just a like a, a general test. Yes. Of your skill. But yeah. you remember Shikamaru didn't win, right? No, they just saw his like leadership skills. So I, I guess it was the third Hokage who seen it. He saw it. He's like, regardless of the fight, he he still qualified the to be a tuning. The third Hokage like died like right after Shikamaru's fight, like an hour after at most. I think they had already decided b before, or like, or I don't know who decided it. I guess it would be, um, like, the probably the higher-ups, like, the two old people. I don't know their name. Oh, the the village elders. Yeah, those two. Well, as of now, it's the Hokage's advisor, so I guess it changes. I feel like we're what on I'm a is, pretty yeah, hard we're on, tangent. We're on this, like, weird tangent. About we should go how... back to, um... Okay, um, so yeah, what you so were I... asking was about, like, can... S-class mission. Yeah. What does it entail? What does an S-class mission itself? entail? Do I need to, like, find an exact chapter? That, that would be preferable, yeah. Okay. I'll see if I can help you, because that might be hard. 
I'm looking for Naruto chapter 50, apparently. I remember the gist of it, because it was um something along the lines of, like, Genin get D rank, Chunin get C rank, or no. Jonin get S rank, I think, right? Jonin get A rank. S rank is uh. reserved for highly capable Jonin and Kage, according to the wiki. Is that what you saw through chapter 50? What about 143? No, that was what, um... That was what the wiki was saying. It doesn't cite okay. where, like, where the fuck they get that original information from. One sec. I'm looking at chapter 50 right now. That's a great Sakura spread. Stop. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Chapter 50, page 7. Okay. Okay. I don't think S Onko rank says, is ever it's described. Already dusk, I have to find blah, blah, blah. If it really is you, then we'll end this right here, right now. Because you become a bingo book level S threat. The worst kind of security risk. And I'm going to kill you. Even okay. if you so have. S rank ninja are the only thing. Because in chapter 143, well, she says uh, refers, threat. Which would be just like an, you, you are a threat as a ninja. Because you're S rank and you're not with the villages. Right? Well, anyone who's so in the bingo book. So S rank missions guess, are never really like detailed on like so what seeing, they what they require to become an S rank as, right seeing as we know that Jonin take A rank Chunin no no Jonin C take A and, and S S is like cause there's no other uh, rank above Jonin right it's no like, I'm saying like basic Jonin take A rank of course some Jonin are getting sent on S rank like of course but what I'm saying is the you're like your baseline Jonin takes an A rank mission a Chunin takes a B rank mission. C and D are reserved for Genin. And or, I guess, Academy students, because they went on weird missions for some reason. Well, no no um, rank is reserved for anyone. Because we know that anyone can end up on any kind of mission. It's just more common for these people to go on. So then, due to this, like, consistent being of, like, this kind of ties to this, but there are exceptions, right? Mm -hmm. Due to that consistency... I would just say that an S rank mission is for S class shinobi. Like a bingo book, like uh, so. I, how do you get a bounty? Let's talk about that. Um, There's many ways that you can get bounties. Like, your head. Awesome so like also imagine if anyone just imagine if like Metal Lee just goes out and starts like murdering people in villages, of and is have like a rogue. Yeah, and, and like but, yeah, he would probably end up in the bingo book if he did that long enough. So Asuma who we know didn't yeah. do anything along those lines, also has a bounty in the bingo book. So it's definitely about skill. Wait, he had, can you show me that? Yeah. It, like, states that his bounty is, like, uh, so much higher than Chiriku's, who is his mentor. Can you, like, um, provide yeah. the reason why and the showing of him? The, his idea was that this was a... Uh, he was this high up on the bingo book due to the fact that uh, he was stronger than Ichiriku. But I'm Ichiriku? trying to find Ichiriku. Yeah, the who is other, that? the first guy who Asuma and Hidon neg before they neg um, what's his face? Oh wait, Ichiriku or Chiri Chiriku? Probably Chiriku. Sorry. Thought you were talking about the ramen dude. <laughs> Ichiraku. Ichiraku. <clears throat> Bro, why is... Why can't I... I'm gonna start timing, you know, by yeah, the way. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, this is a debate. Yes, it's a debate. Please put out, what bro. Is... What is it? Literally type in chat. Anybody will tell you. Oh, alright, well, don't be toxic. Chill out. I need another invite link, Spencer. Okay, I was about to send one to you, and then you interrupted my recorded debate. Oh, oh, oh. Nigga, when the fuck does... What are you looking for again? Oh, I'm the just awesome looking for... data book? Yeah, I'm just looking for the chapter where, like, Asuma fights Hidon and Kakazu. Oh, I think I remember that. That if he turns in Asuma's head, he'll get like. I don't know if it's a bounty book, but he'll like get money because of who Asuma it's on is. The, he's on the black market, but you asked how do you get a bounty put on you. So that's oh, well, that's answering. different. Like, S rank criminals are like.
Okay, so I guess my wording was off. So how do you get into the, the bounty book? Should be because we know for Sasuke, he like deserted his village and like yeah, started doing evil and stuff. Yeah. Um. So I don't that's... think S rank exactly means you're super strong, right? Because like Zetsu is, I'm pretty sure he was an S rank, and we they have no feats of Zetsu ever doing anything. You know. Let's look up confirmed S rank characters. The Holokatsuki. There's a Sasuke. there's a list, right? Um, Gato, or maybe not Gato, maybe Zabuza. Okay, it's basically like, <laughs> oh my god! All the we should um reel it in, Spencer. Yeah, yeah. All the S rank criminals are just like the Akatsuki, and then there's some from Konoha, I guess. Oh so, shit! Um, some of them are Anbu and even Chunin. We're on the point where it's saying why um, going on an S rank mission doesn't automatically or make you like really high up in the verse. And then we also still need to discuss um, your your proof for uh, Ryuki or whatever his name is being yeah. as strong as Hidon, other than his own word and this weird like law that you're trying to like like That's fucking true. shoehorn in to the debate, which is like super strange. Okay, so then <clears throat> I will just say since like. Mm. Let me look up S rank missions and that'll give me a, a vague idea. Oh, oh, I can just say that there are some like techniques that are S rank, right? That's true. Yeah. So then, S but that rank, doesn't make you S rank. So we have consistency of mm -hmm. S class criminals and S rank techniques being incredibly dangerous and high up there so then an yeah. s that an s rank mission would just be the same so they fall the, what the are you saying like the joshing technique is like an s rank technique um, or what there's a lot of s rank techniques like killing ash bones is s rank is um, the rasengan s rank or no it might rasengan be a rank. Is a rank yeah okay. all renegon abilities are s rank amaterasu's s rank it's like all these powerful abilities are S rank, right? And then we have all these powerful shinobi that are S class. So then, why would that ranking suddenly change when it comes to the missions? I'm sorry, can you say that for me one more time? So we have all these super deadly jutsu that are S rank. Yeah. And then we have members of the Akatsuki and like extremely powerful shinobi that are S class, right? So then why would the missions change in sever severity? Yeah. I'm saying like, is there a confirmation on the Joshin ritual due to being S rank? Because like the their mission was to sneak into this village, infiltrate the um uh, community, find out where this guy is at. This guy who's literally killing little girls, like taking them one by one and letting, making them wait for months in that cave, and then killing them, which is really bad. Um, and then taking him, them out himself. I feel like it's less of the fight at the end and more of the entirety of the mission that makes it S rank. Would you agree with that? I would disagree. I would say S rank missions are missions concerning shinobi that have S rank potential or that are S class. Because that's what makes right. the most sense for it to be I, like I feel a like what, what, I, circle. what I've stated is um, it makes more sense in my eyes. Do you want to um, yeah, like provide some evidence saying, oh, oh, do you, oh, do you want to just leave it up in the air? Well, I mean, I think that like the reasoning of S rank, S class means S rank. S rank Jutsu does not mean S rank Shinobi. Yeah, not so, at all. So my thing was, mm -hmm. I think that it's pretty clear that mm -hmm. S rank Shinobi in S class Jutsu or switch them out would lead to mm -hmm. an S class mission. So I think we can just leave it up in the air because I think while I don't have evidence, the like the logic. Oh, you don't have varied. evidence that he is an S rank shinobi, nor is his technique an S rank jutsu. But I can yeah. I can look it up. Yeah. It's stated to be an S class mission though. So I'm just saying that it wasn't whether he was S class. It was mm -hmm. whether the mission was S class because the mission was just Exactly. That's what I was down. saying. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm saying it's no, an the, the mission, mission was the, the, was the like the goal down. of the mission was to stop what he was doing, but there's like more to that. You can't just like rush in 
right? I guess you had to this, like do it I guess slowly. this doesn't matter if I win the proof by exhaustion point. So let's just leave this up in the air. Is that okay? I feel like we've gone on long enough. Sure. All right. <coughs> <coughs> what was the next point you wanted to do? Because you didn't. I say we do proof by exhaustion last. Okay. So like, what's Mirai's AP? That would just scale to. It scales directly <laughs> to Ryuk. She was able to one tap Ryuk, and if he scales to Hedon, then that would be enough to one tap Asuma. Can we agree to that? If he scales to Hedon? If he scales to Hedon, yeah, sure, fine. Okay. Whatever. So, um, and the way that I've ascertained that, right, is the wind style whirlwind fist. Because if you remember, she like puts him under Genjutsu, mm -hmm. talks to him for a little bit, and he like starts going fucking crazy about I'm immortal now, I'm immortal. Yeah, and, and it's he, obviously he's not. Yeah, it's pretty obvious he's not. <laughs> it's kind of mm -hmm. sad. Um, and then what ends up happening, right, is that he just, like, gets one-tapped and falls to the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a jabroni. I feel like this is, like, snuck in. You're trying to, like, downplay him. So, um, also, like, like you just, um, in, in that, um, whole, um, spiel, you just said, awesome skill to Hidon, and his, um, no, I, guess I said I said if she scales to Hidon, then she would one tap Asuma. Well, I thought you said if she scales to Hidon, she would scale to Asuma. Did I mishear that? If I said that, I definitely didn't mean to, and I'll retract like, that. Claim. I'm pretty sure you said like she if she scales to Hidon, I mean Raiki, and Raiki scales to Hidon, then she scales to Asuma, and then Who she would. Uh, said one tap. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like finish what I was saying, but. No, well, I'll just I'll just retract the claim. Whether right. I made it or not, I'll retract it. So then, this is I'll type it out too because I don't want to. I'll type it out in scans. If she scales to Hedon, or if she scales, she does scale to Ryuk. I think we can agree on that, right? Mm -hmm. If Ryuki scales to Hedon. Then wait, 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 wait. Can I rewatch the uh, the Mirai versus Ryuk fight really quickly? Yeah, sure. I have a link for you already. All right. Do I have a link for you? No, I don't. Sorry. That's fine. I I'll thought find I did. It. I just want to see if there was like any tricks or anything. Like what exactly? Because I'm pretty sure she was like losing, she and then she, she had like a with plot armor. Too. Oh, does she? Yeah. Does it do anything? So yeah. So she starts with Genjutsu. He thinks he sliced open her midsection, but he actually sliced open, like, a water bottle that had, like, iron-filled blood. Right? It was, like, heavy and iron from the hot spring or whatever. She notes this from before. And so he, like, licks it. So she already had him under, like, a small, subtle genjutsu that the water bottle wasn't there. And then mm -hmm. she, like, has him in another genjutsu. I don't know if it's, like, multiple layers or if she builds on it. It doesn't matter. She has him under Genjutsu the moment he sees her. He slashes open what he thinks is her midsection, but it's actually a water bottle. And then, <laughs> after he thinks he's won, she's like, no, no, no. Pops out of nowhere. <laughs> he's like, I'm immortal. I'll show you. He draws in all the spikes, and then she uses Whirlwind Fist. You can look for it yourself, but, like, that was really it. Okay. And just watching the the final hit, it's like. Damn, kind of bloody. All right, fine. What? Yeah, she one shot them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if. <clears throat> If Ryuk scales to Hidon, then she one-shots Asuma after Genjutsu. Can we agree on that? Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, hello? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I have it. I, I just wanted to type it out and post it in scans, right? Okay. I wanted to make sure it was very clear. Oh, wait. Well, I mean, if you can prove her Genjutsu would work on Asuma. Let's talk about Genjutsu then, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What Genjutsu resistance has Asuma shown? Um, I guess if it scales him to Kakashi, that would like. 
Kakashi yeah. has a Sharingan. Yeah, with like factor in um the ability of Kakashi having the Sharingan. Well then can you prove that whenever it says his true power, right? Just post that state that like scan if you have it. If not I don't have I, it. I kinda Geico remember has it. it. <laughs> okay. So um if you can prove that the true power that the scan is talking about means Genjutsu, then sure. Or it would fall under Genjutsu resistance. But I don't think that I can't it does. prove that. No, I can't prove that. <clears throat> I found it. Maybe he has like oh I shouldn't have posted that. Oh okay, yeah, so do you want to move on from Genjutsu? Sure. <sighs> okay. So you can see that Genjutsu would work on Asuma, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. I, mm -hmm. I work. just dropped his data book scan and he has like some Genjutsu resistance. I was scared. Well, I mean, he hasn't shown if even if I say to that, you would probably ask me for like a feat and like he has no feats. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so then I'm going to make an even if claim. We're going to go under the assumption that Ryuk doesn't scale to Hedon, right? Just, yeah. just like, uh, I'm just like making a multiple worlds claim, so I have offense on both sides of the coin, right? So then, how would he get past her Genjutsu? How would who get past? Asuma. I'm saying he wouldn't. Oh, wait! So I'm not even like arguing for Genjutsu. No, even if she doesn't like scale the heat on, he wouldn't. Because that's what hey, I'm if she doesn't. About. Well, I mean, you would have to prove that she can do it on a person that's stronger. Than her uh, toe. Hmm. I can only prove that she can do it on people with Genjutsu resistance of like high tiers. That's well, be it. He, he haven't proven Ryuki is a high tier. That well, uh, really yeah, make... I meant I more so meant Sara does Genjutsu because she has the Sharingan. Maybe high tier is an example. Did she use there. Genjutsu on Sarada? Yeah, I can I can show that scan too. Then she just scales above Shard. Shard is like one Tomo Sharingan. That she go. could hardly control. Like, I remember she used it. She was like training for a little bit. She almost passed out from using too much chakra. Yeah, I just sent it to you. She uses like Kurenai's Genjutsu too. What a bitch. Yeah, she used it in her arc too. Okay. So then let's talk about the Sharingan and how it works, right? Or mm -hmm. if if Sharingan Genjutsu resistance scales higher than um what the fuck? It would because like the same jutsu was used no, on Itachi and he I, negged it. I meant like scales higher than the average Jonin or Asuma uh -oh. specifically. Um Wait, so, I don't understand why we're still talking about Genjutsu. Because I want to have offense even if I lose the point of Ryuk scaling the heat on. I mean, if you lose that point, then she wouldn't scale to him in speed at all. So okay. there would be no point. <laughs> so you're you're saying So that, like, instead of would, instead of you trying to she trap would be me, like speed blitzed, right? Yeah, and so instead okay, of you trying to trap is, me, this is totally I need you to me. go ahead and prove that Ryuk scales to heat on. I I genuinely wasn't trying to trap you. I nah, was just trying I, to I make feel sure like I'm going to end up getting trapped in some Genjutsu nonsense. So go ahead and scale Ryuki to Hidan. Okay. So I have, again, right, my proof by exhaustion that they scale to each other. And then I have the fact that it's an s rank mission, which is admittedly somewhat ambiguous and is left up to the judges on whether or not that would be, um, like... On whether or not that would make him an S-Class Shinobi or of some sort of S-Rank magnitude of a threat, right? So I'll leave that up to the judges. But I'm sorry, Spencer. So can you, like, you, you've explained the proof of exhaustion to me, but can you, like, uh, tie it into this, um, how it, how exactly it, pro like... Proves? Okay, yeah. I yeah, tie, tie it into the story for me. So, basically, right, there are consistent scenes where he says he would be on par with Hedon, right? Yeah. So, due to the fact that there are consistent scenes that say this, there's a, an admittedly um, ambiguous amount of supporting evidence, right? But on top of all this, 
there's nothing that contradicts it, right? So if we have mm-hmm. multiple statements of something, nothing that contradicts it, and supporting evidence, I see what, no wait, problem. Wait, what's the supporting evidence? I'm sorry, the I missed that, that part. The fact that it's an S rank mission. That's why I said it was up in the air oh. whether it was truly supported. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, it's like, let me see if I can think of an example. Um, trying to think if there's like any Naruto characters that just boast they're stronger than another person like all the time. I want to say like N- Naruto like always saying he's better than Sasuke like in, in the beginning then, of the series. Yeah, and then it gets contradicted. So it wouldn't fall under proof by exhaustion. Well like bef- well, uh okay. Um even in the academy, right? Sasuke was still bullying on Naruto all the time. Like they had that Shinobi Kumite fight one time. And Sasuke blitzes him before he ever noticed what happened. Okay. Um. All right. Well, the proof by exhaustion thing. Um. I don't see how exactly it's like helping to prove he scales to Hidan. Yeah. It, it like. It, it would say it would like state that there's no contradiction, but it would also state. I mean, it would also show that there's no no real proof to like. There's no real evidence to provide it other than his word of mouth. Okay, and so that means nothing. Like I said, earlier. Tessero, right? Yeah. It basically comes down to his word of mouth versus the lack of evidence that is on the supporting of the affirmative, and just yeah. in general in the negation. And we know he's a liar. I already like. He's like a mischievous, um, lying cunt. Wait, like throughout lot? the entire. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, he like he, lies to all the girls. He lies to all like, the girls, right? That's yeah. True. So, why but why then, do we have any reason to believe so, anything he says? So then, after his facade falls, right, and after he's being pushed after lying to all the girls, he stops lying all of a sudden. How do you know that? How do I know that? Well, How do you know he's not been... lying anymore? Okay, so there's there's nothing that's been proven or shown to be a lie. That doesn't mean it's not a lie, though. It doesn't so, mean it's okay. automatically true either. So Tessera, right? Yeah. If there's nothing to contradict a statement, and the statement is made by someone who has some knowledge, right? He no, studied, he he should have no knowledge. Way of, like... No, it's stated that he studied the way of Joshin, right? Yeah. Okay, Joshin's a god, not Hidan. Hidan is not Joshin. No, Hidan apparently was in the books of Joshin. Okay, so he studied Hidan, right? Joshin, he just read right? some books on Hidan. That doesn't mean that he knows that he's on par with him. <laughs> okay. That's like so, so right? absurd. So he has it, it, it. Sometimes it can seem quite absurd, right? Let me refute that, and then I'll tie it into like something else. Right? So that we can fully understand. Okay. Um, so the idea of it being absurd, really, I think means nothing because I've... You're right. Argument proven... from absurd- absurdity. Sorry yeah. about that. Shouldn't have no, said it. Argument from absurdity isn't inherently fallacious. But if you have no evidence to back up that the claim is untrue well, I did. or absurd, right? I did back up my evidence. Oh, that, that he's like very um unreliable and he he he's like he's introduced to the story as a liar. Like there's no reason like I said there's there's still no reason to take his words at face value just because he's like being pressed doesn't mean he's not lying anymore. Okay. And my response to that was and still is we have no proof that anything he said after the point in which he was caught was a lie. We have no proof it's the truth either. Okay, so it's ambiguous, right? Yeah, so it doesn't mean anything. It's not that it doesn't mean anything. It's that it's ambiguous. So it it helps neither side of this debate because none none of us can truly, like, I've provided, like, some supporting evidence that he's, like, a scumbag and there's no reason to trust him. And your evidence is there's nothing to contradict it, so it's true. So let let me go back to the anime, right? Because okay. the moment that Mirai, like, unmasks him, he just goes full way of Joshin mode, right? So why would he then lie, first of all, about his faith, 
that's pretty out of character, right? Especially for a Joshinist. They're always very open about their faith. Um, He's not then, lying about his faith. He's just saying he scales to Hedon. He's not yeah, saying anything that would, ill about so, his faith. So basically, right? If I said I scaled to Jesus and I didn't scale to Jesus, that would be lying about my faith. And that would be sacrilegious, right? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. So then there's no reason for him to be lying about oracles or great people of people of great standing within his faith. All right, so I still uh I still feel like you haven't proven it's not a lie, but there's also no reason to believe it as fact. Even if it's not a lie, there's no reason to take his uh take him as a credible like I said earlier, like no reason to take him as a credible source anyways. A credible source of exposition, right? Yeah. It's like how Minato said um Obito is faster than um him and Obi uh Toby Rama, even though he's never even met Toby Rama. Like he's probably heard about him. It's like how in the world does he know that? Probably from Hiruzen, right? Because we have reliable sources of exposition, right? Which that is not teaching, Ryuki. <laughs> that are teaching these people, right? Mm -hmm. The reliable yeah. source of exposition that I'm saying is the way of Joshin in the books of Joshin. Can you prove that it's a, the way the books of Joshin are reliable sources of information? Who wrote them? Who wrote Can them? Can you prove they're credible? It's yeah. ambiguous. Oh, appeal to authority. How so? Because, right? You're trying to say that just because I can't prove or that someone who wrote it isn't credible, right? That what it's saying is inherently just like a lie. Well, no, I'm asking you to prove that what it's saying is inherently the truth. Okay, and I can't prove it to be the absolute truth. So now you okay, go on so... to say, right? Why should I take yeah. that as fact? And it again yeah, why falls under appeal to authority. Okay, so, but why should I, why, why, tell me why, um, Raiki is a credible source of information. Because he's a credible source of information, specifically in the way of Joshin, due to his reading and studying the way of Joshin. So, he studied how Joshin is supposed to work. That has nothing to do with him, um, saying that he scales to Hidan. The so, way of Joshin again, is like... right? We know yeah. Hidan's feats. He, presumably, knows Hidan's feats, seeing as he knows Asuma Saratobi. And of the Sarutobi line, right? So, yeah. due to these facts, then he could reliably say if and when he scales to Joshin. Or Hedon, sorry. I don't think that's, like, I don't think that's, um, like, a, a good source of proof at all. Like, I, I, I've already stated that this guy is a liar and, like... Doesn't matter if he's talking about his religion. Doesn't mean he's not like a scumbag or not. Well, I mean, you already said that it wouldn't make sense for him to lie about his religion. Well, no, I was talking about I was talking about you you saying that um, being or uh, scaling to Jesus and being a Christian would be sacrilege, and it would be similar in the way of Joshin. Well, he's not saying he's scaling to Joshin, right? No, so it's not saying, the same. So okay, so saying you scale to Paul the Apostle, right? Mm -hmm. That would be directly equivalent and still sacrilegious. Mm, here, let's, let's look up the definition of sacrilege. Okay, so it says sacrilege is a violation of or injur an injurious statement of a sacred object, site, or person. Yeah. So the sacred p person, site, or object, or the sacred person and site would be this cave that he found, right? To perform the way of Joshin ritual. Actually, he didn't uh, find it. I don't I, know I about think that. I feel that like the only thing it. is the person. And so even then, the person, right, would be he Don, and so it would be sacrilegious and thus out of character of him as a Joshinist to go on and then be like okay then um i scaled the heat on right you're not gonna say i scaled the fucking um what is it i scaled the paul the apostle like it doesn't make sense for him to say he scales to this like massive and well-revered person within his religion if he doesn't because that's his religion it would be sacrilegious so he can say it and believe it's true and it's not a lie but there's no reason to believe it's like it uh, can be taken as fact, right? 
Like he, and, what he's saying in his own mind and to us viewers could not be a lie because, like you said, it would be within his character. But it doesn't mean that like it's actually true. Okay, and then right, then it just weighs right. We weigh the the options right. There's the fact that he may be misguided and not be telling the truth uh, unknowingly, or there's the way that he wouldn't say something that he didn't know to be true, seeing as this is a religious religious figure. Right. Or he's so, so like just, he's I like such a say, fanatic of the religion and he don that he want he said he needs to live up to his name and in the way of being a Joshin and following the um the ways of he don as well. I, that I he never would just saw like that. I well, he said rewatch the fight. It's it's, I am the it's man in your skin. It says and that his and that will ensure that I live up to my name as the second coming of Master He Don. Yeah. Live up to so, his name. So he already yeah, had so his name. He, he's trying to live up to the name that is placed on him. Doesn't mean he's like already he done level. So he he's saying that if um what's it called? If I had been in the era of Hidan, or what is where, where is yeah, it? Yeah, I would have stood uh, shoulder to shoulder if I had been in the era of Hidan. I think I typed but, it out wrong. There's okay. So there's like like I said, he can believe what he's saying is true, but there's no reason to believe uh, what he's saying is a fact. Okay, to the viewer. so then I think we've continued, like, went on this back and forth long enough, so I say yeah. we give closing statements and listen to our judgment. Okay. Do you want to go All first, right. or do you want me to go first? I can start. I feel I've proven my opponent's um source of exposition is um very uncredible, in the fact that we've seen this man um doing very conniving and sneaky things to children, and uh, thus, and like, finally killing them and taking their blood for his own selfish desires um we also um have no reason to believe that uh, uh the s rank mission automatically scales mirai to like a high up in the um in the world of naruto so uh th that like defeats but bo both of those points i feel defeat the point of mirai scaling anything to hidan and thus she would scale nowhere near Asuma, who would then one-shot her with his more refined um, chakra blades, his uh, more, like, refined knowledge of jutsu and his, like, Buddha jutsu and just all that stuff. Uh, so, the, the Buddha isn't canon. I mean, I said Asuma, right? It's like... Okay, okay, fine. It's like... The most, uh, that's the most recent version of Asuma, the Buddha jutsu. Or, like, I guess the Edo would be, but it's not him at full power. So yeah, I'm done. All right. So I feel that I've won this debate because we have agreed that in the case that she scales to Ryuk, right? Or in the case that Ryuk scales to Hidon. Let me get the exact one. Because we wrote this down. If Ryuk scales to Hidon, then she one-shots Awesome after using Genjutsu, right? So then my win condition is literally just making sure that Ryuk scales to Hidon, right? And so there's a lot of ambiguity in the air, right? And so it comes down to the idea of would a religious person, someone completely and utterly dedicated to their religion, say things that they don't know to be true about being on par with a major religious figure? And I think it's easy to like, I think it's pretty easy to ascertain that no, that wouldn't be the case, especially in the fanatic religion of Joshi. And so I think it's very clear that under the context of the debate and what was said, Ryuk definitely scales to Hidon due to the fact that the like proof by exhaustion, even though I went in detail, was never debunked as a concept, right? And so it would still hold. It's just that the ambiguity around said statements is like, or around the truthfulness of his statements that have not been contradicted um, is the only thing that's like battled. So I feel that not only have I won on the proof by exhaustion point, I've won the general debate because even if I lose the proof by exhaustion point, I've thoroughly explained as to why a religious figure would not be lying or even say things that could be sacrilege mm -hmm. against um, against uh, someone they admire in their religion. Judges? Okay, not a judge. Uh, I want to bring this up. Uh, I And correct me if I'm wrong. Wouldn't your whole proof of exhaustion point go out the fucking window if he brought up the fact that he says, yeah, I'm more on the more on the more, and there's nothing to contradict it? No, so that was just, like, 
due to shock, really. He was just in disbelief of the idea that he wasn't immortal at that point. Yeah, but still, we saw, he says we saw it enough him, like, times, and it's not contradicted state. to fall under the, uh, was it the, what did you say, uh, proof, proof by exhaustion? exhaustion? Yeah, I would still yeah. just, it, like, it, say that he was in, like, a damaged mental state due to almost achieving what he thought to be perfection, and then losing it so I mean, hastily due to a Genjutsu. He, like, continues you to also think say that, that he's like. Con couldn't you also say that he's been in a consistent, like, damaged mental state due to the fact that he's fucking dragging out little girls and murdering them? I mean, that, so, like, that be, wouldn't be anything new. That could be argued, but damaged mental state would mean, like, more so than usual in this case. But I, I severely want to hear your judgment. Oh, I mean, I'm not a judge, so I'm not judging it. Oh. Yeah, what were you at? I was about to say, Snooty, you're not even... <laughs> this, man I, said, I, I, this man said I, yeah, before I, I give practiced. my judgment. No, 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 I literally said I'm not... He, a no, he said no, he said, that. okay, I'm not a judge, but... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, those so, were my exact words, so I didn't want to, like... I don't want... I didn't so, want to say anything. I what's happening? Did you guys, like, reach a conclusion or something? Yeah. Well, what was the conclusion? Sure we don't get Spencer demonetized. No. no, we reached a conclusion, and so I'm asking the judges to judge. Uh, yeah, I would say that... I think Spencer took it, but not by, like, a, a large, large degree. I think Tessero was, like, a cat's hair away from taking it. But, yeah, that'd be my verdict. I'm gonna go pee. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Well, I guess to start off, I uh, kind of agree with Eldred. Uh, I think Tessero kind of had the right argument going for him on uh, some of the points, like the point about Hidan not being uh, credible. I just don't think it was really argued quite as well as Spencer was arguing his side. Uh, the proof by exhaustion thing as a concept, as Spencer said, was also not like extrapolated yeah and then uh the s rank thing spencer did show like a lot of consistency for it but uh tessero did like give a counter to it i don't really know how i felt about like who won that but in the overall feel of the debate I feel like spencer just kind of had the edge also uh tessero i i don't know if you debate like awesome a lot but with the Genjutsu point, you do know if he scales to Kakashi at his true power, like, even if you're not talking about the Sharingan, he does dispel Genjutsu without it. Like, him and Guy. And if he scales, if Kakashi scales... Oh, I tried Guy, to argue like, that, but then he said, like, can you prove that his true power would be, like, would include, like, Genjutsu resistance? And there's no way to prove no, that. No, 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 no. I'm saying that, like, Dude, remember in part I'm one... I'm trying to get the judgments out for the recording, bro. Okay. We could discuss this, I promise. I mean, it's 2-1 anyway, so... Yeah, matter. I already lost. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear Demi's judgment, though. I feel like Demi would have an interesting take on Proof by Exhaustion. Um... The bullshit. Well... I... I don't think it was necessarily, um, like, that you established, the, like, the Proof of Exhaustion, like, in such a way that it was just undebunkable. I just think Tessero, um... He seemed to be unaware with it as a con, unaware of it as a concept. So we just seemed to have a harder time countering. It's like unfamiliar waters, if you know what I mean. But um, I mean, I never really think to use uh, proof by exhaustion in debate. So it's a, one of the newer things I have to judge on. Interestingly enough, but um, I, I think he did an interesting job trying to debunk some of the um, some of the minor premises within um within your proof your spiel about proof of by exhaustion. Like, um, the fact that he's just dishonest to tell. You had a good counter, um, with the point about Sacrilege. him being a religious zealot. Yeah. But then he could always just question, like, um, is sacrilege something that's actually, like, held within that religion? It's not all religion and sacrilege. Yeah. It's such a high, high esteem. Well, not esteem, but in a negative. You know, the way of Joshin is very, very strict about sacrilege. They, like, kill... Mm -hmm. They kill anyone on the spot and worship, like, offer them up to Joshin. I mean, they kill anybody on the spot and offer them up to <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, like, you can say that, like, yeah, they, like, they're very heavy on sacrilege, but, like, them killing somebody and offering them up to Joshin is not mutually exclusive to sacrilege. 
at least in the way of jogging. Doesn't go. Yeah, it doesn't go hand in hand. They're just kind of psychopaths. And Don did call people heretics a lot. Yeah. They didn't respect his religion. Well, I mean, he, he probably would have killed him anyways, though. That's the thing. The only yeah, person he didn't kill for it was fucking Kakazu or people who were, like, outright stronger than him. Alright, I think that's kind of done. Uh, thank you all for right. judging. I think this was a really good debate, Tessero. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, it really was a good debate. Uh, and I'm out.